I got one question for you. Do you feel a need? I feel the need. The need for speed. Ow! No, I wasn't talking about Tom Cruise. I was referring to this. Need for Speed is one of the biggest racing video game franchises around. With 24 games in the series, it has sold over 100 million copies worldwide, behind only Mario Kart in terms of genre popularity. The latest game in the series, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit Remastered, has just hit store shelves. So today on Game Files, we're going to commemorate its launch by looking back at the history of Need for Speed. And to do that, we have to go back to 1994. That's when the original game, The Need for Speed, launched on the 3DO and MS-DOS. It was developed by EA Canada, which had only just been created, and contained elements that would later become series trademarks, like realistic cars, plenty of traffic, and of course, high-octane police chases. It was a hit, with many citing its sense of realism in comparison to other racing games of the era as a high point. EA had a franchise on their hands, and they weren't going to let the opportunity to grow it slide. Four sequels were released annually between 1997 and 2000, each of varying quality. The game sold well, but Need for Speed was soon overshadowed by another racing game that took realism to a whole new level, Gran Turismo. The PlayStation-exclusive dominated racing games when it launched in late 1997. At the time, Need for Speed straddled the line between realism and arcade gameplay, and it didn't have any qualities that made it truly unique. So with the coming of the sixth console generation, it was time for Need for Speed to define itself. And the answer, it turns out, was illegal street races and cop chases. Starting with Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2, Need for Speed games focused on two things playing as a young street racer making their way up the illegal racing scene, and playing as the cops trying to take those street racers down. The emphasis changed from game to game, with the Hot Pursuit series focused on cops versus racers, while underground branded games emphasized taking on fellow racers in lavish cities. By establishing itself this way, Need for Speed grew quickly. It became, alongside Burnout, the most popular arcade racer in the world. That popularity culminated in 2005's Need for Speed Most Wanted, which sold over 16 million copies worldwide. The more intricate police pursuits, improved graphics, and fleshed out story mode makes it beloved to this day by racing game fans. Unfortunately, Most Wanted would be the franchise's high note for five years. EA by this point had turned Need for Speed into an annualized franchise, with the new developer headlining a title each year. Carbon, Pro Street, Undercover, Shift, each of these games had different gameplay styles that never reached the highs of earlier games. Few of the developers had a long history with racing games, and it showed. To get the series back on track, EA turned to Criterion Games, the legendary developers behind the rival Burnout series, and what they pulled off was nothing short of a classic. Need for Speed Hot Pursuit took the series back to its roots, with a focus on exotic cars and high-impact police chases. You can either play as a street racer or a cop chasing them down, each with their own race events and storylines to follow. With over 100 miles of road to race down, Hot Pursuit was the most action-focused racing game in the franchise. And players loved it, especially in comparison to Needs for Speed's recent history. Criterion followed it up with a new Most Wanted, which was similarly well-received, although not as well as Hot Pursuit. Around this time, Need for Speed grew beyond video games thanks to a film adaptation. Starring Aaron Paul of Breaking Bad fame, it followed a street racer avenging his partner's death by racing cross-country. It had fast cars, lots of action, and plenty of police chases. And in the grand tradition of most video game movies, it was really bad. Back in the world of racing games, Need for Speed shifted developers yet again in 2013. This time, Swedish studio Ghost Games was placed in charge of the franchise. Their takes on the series focused on two things that the series had neglected to that point. 
Story, and online multiplayer. Games like Need for Speed 2015 and Payback featured multiple playable characters, each with their own skill. And games like Rivals and Heat emphasize large, always connected online worlds to drive around in. The results were mixed in both sales and player reception. But even though Ghost continued to improve with each passing game, EA pulled the plug on their leadership in 2020, handing back the reins to Criterion. So where does Need for Speed go from here? The newest game is a remaster of 2010's Hot Pursuit, easily the most popular Need for Speed entry in 15 years. From there, Criterion can make whatever they want. And considering that they're the best racing game developers in the business, Need for Speed fans have a lot to look forward to in the years to come.